So today we are going to discuss the compiler design. What is compiler design? So before going to that, actually all the programs are written in. All the programs are written in normal English, so that the normal English cannot understand by the system. System can understand only zeros and ones. So we need to uh, convert these zeros and ones into oh, sorry. It is English language into zeros and ones. So to convert this uh, uh, zero or uh, English normal English language into zeros and ones, that is system understandable language, we require a translators. So what is a translator? Translator is nothing but translator is nothing but which is used to convert a normal program into object code. So. <coughs> There are different types of translators to convert a normal uh, English language into object code. So there, uh, they are compiler, second one interpreter, third assembler. So what is compiler, what is interpreter, what is assembler? A uh, compiler is nothing but uh, it is used to convert the entire document at a time into object code. Whereas interpreter is used to convert a line by line, one line after the other line. So among these two compiler and interpreter, compiler takes more time to convert normal English language to uh, object code, whereas interpreter takes less time. As well as assembler is also one type of translator. It is used to convert assembly language to object code. What is assembly language? Assembly language is nothing but it is used to convert normal. Uh, let us take for example, if we want to perform addition of two numbers. To perform addition of two numbers, we use add. So add is a symbol to uh, convert two uh, to perform addition of two numbers. So for that purpose, assembler is used. <coughs> so here we are going to discuss compiler design. So actually, uh, before going to discuss compiler design, let us know different types of languages. There are different types of languages. First one, high level language. Second, low level language. Third, assembly language so what is high level language what is low level language what is assembly language high level language is nothing but a, a normal person can can easily write a program so that language is called as assembly language what about low level language low level language is nothing but a system understandable language whereas here high level language system cannot understand this language so normal user can easily write the program but a system cannot understand system can understand only zeros and ones so these zeros and ones are represented in low level language so a program can be every time has to convert high level language to low level language for that purpose we use translators so uh, what about assembly language uh, we already discussed assembly language is nothing but it consists of uh, <coughs> symbols to perform certain action or certain program <coughs> now we are going to discuss compiler design what is compiler compiler is nothing but Compiler is nothing but we are writing a program that program is compiled by using compiler after compilation that program can be converted to object code so this is the purpose of a compiler so in this subject we are going to discuss what is compiler design? What is the steps it involved for while performing compilation process? Compiler uh, involves seven, six phases. One is 
लेक्सिकल एनालिसिस सेकेंड सिंटैक्स एनालिसिस नेक्स्ट सीमांटिक एनालिसिस नेक्स्ट इंटरमीडिएट कोर जनरेटर एंड नेक्स्ट वन फोर्थ फोर्थ सॉरी फिफ्थ वन कोर ऑप्टिमाइजेशन नेक्स्ट कोड जनरेशन सो दीज आर द फेसेस इट कैन परफॉर्म वाई परफॉर्म वाई कंस्ट्रक्टिंग कंपाइलेशन सो फर्स्ट वन इज लेक्सिकल एनालिसिस सेकेंड सिंटैक्स एनालिसिस थर्ड सीमांटिक एनालिसिस फोर्थ इंटरमीडिएट कोड जनरेशन कोड ऑप्टिमाइजेशन कोड कोड जनरेशन वॉट इज लेक्सिकल एनालिसिस so in this phase it is going to identify whichever we write in the program so uh, in that program it is going to identify what are the identifiers we used what are the constraints we used what are the uh, different uh, number of variables or anything it can do or uh, variables means uh, one more thing uh, it, it, it can identify keywords all those can be identified under lexical analysis phase all those we call as tokens let us take a, for example int a is equal to b plus c star 60 is there a is equal to b plus let us take for example let us consider int a is equal to b plus c star 60 here in this case we use a as one identifier b as also another identifier c all also another identifier and one more uh, value is there 60 60 is the constant value so <clears throat> it can take as identifier 1 is equal to identifier 2 plus identifier 3 star 60 so all this can be identified in lexical analysis it identifies as a as identifier b and c also identifies equal to is a equal operator plus is a plus operator star is a multiplication operator as well as 60 is a constant value so these are identified under lexical analysis phase so everything is called as here uh, <coughs> we call as a token here int is one type of token a is token b is token c is token 60 is also token so in uh, second phase that is syntax analysis phase the token stream the token stream is a token string is a input to the syntax analysis so it is a input to the syntax analysis in syntax analysis phase it is going to identify whether there are any syntax errors are there when uh, whenever syntax errors are available in a in, in in a program those are identified under syntax analysis phase so uh, while identifying the errors it is going to perform uh, it is going to construct a syntax tree or parse tree syntax tree or parse tree by constructing syntax tree or parse tree it can identify the syntax errors so after uh, let us take same example same instruction a is equal to b plus c star 60 is there let us construct a syntax tree or parse tree how it will be for this statement so here a is equal to a is equal to again it represents b star c sorry b plus c star 60 b plus 6 c b plus c 
again C consists of C star 60. So again we are going to take star 60. So this is a syntax tree or parse tree for a given example. So in syntax analysis it is going to identify this, uh, it is going to construct this syntax tree or parse tree. We call it as either syntax tree or parse tree. In next phase, what is the third phase, third phase of compiler process, uh, process that is semantic analysis. In, in semantic analysis, it is going to identify, uh, it is going to construct a semantic tree. In semantic analysis, in, uh, actually in syntax analysis, it is going to don't bother about, it doesn't bother about the meaning of a sentence or meaning of a program or meaning of any instruction whereas in semantic analysis it is going to identify whether the meaning of a sentence or meaning of a instruction is correct or not let us take an example in a is equal to b by zero according to the syntax analysis int space a is equal to b by 0 is a uh, correct sentence according to the syntax analysis. It is a correct uh, syntax only. Whereas in semantic analysis, semantic means it is going to identify whether there are any meaning uh, errors are there. So b by 0 is uh, meaningless. That is identified under semantic analysis. So, it is going to construct one semantic tree. That tree is nothing but one more thing in semantic analysis it is going to identify. Let us take for example int int a comma b and int c is equal to a plus b as well as I am again taking as d is equal to a by b. So in, in, whenever we come, uh, come to here int c is equal to a plus b, we compulsorily get whenever to our integers, we are going to get integer type value only. In some mm -hmm. cases whenever we are going to come here a by b, in some cases we are going to get integer type. In some cases we are going to get floating point. But according to this statement, int d is equal to a by p, we, it is displaced as only integer part. So then we need to convert this integer part to floating part. So that is comes under semantic analysis space. Let us take a same example. a is equal to b plus c star 16 so we are converting int to float it is going to convert again it is going to display 16 so this is called as semantic analysis. Next one is intermediate code generation. It is a mediator between all these first three phases and next two phases. Next two phases are nothing but code optimization and code generation. It is a mediator, intermediate code is nothing but letter it, it is going to convert some other form which is uh, easy to perform compilation process. Some other forms are nothing but let us take for example triple, quadruple, all are concerned there. See intermediate code generation. Let us take same example a is equal to b plus six uh, b plus c star sixty. So how it will perform under intermediate code generation? Let us see. So we we are going to take a b plus c. We are going to, here it is going to assume some temporary variables t1 is equal to b plus c and again t2 is equal to b plus c star 60 is there 
then instead of taking b plus c, I am taking as only t1, t1 star 60. Next, t3 is equal to, or uh, I think no need of taking t3, here b plus c is, star 60 is completed here. So, directly I am taking a is equal to t2. So, this entire value we are, we need to assign to identifier A. So, T1 is equal to B plus C. A triple is nothing but it is going to use only three identifiers. So, in this statement if you observe, T1 is one identifier, B is another identifier and C is another identifier. In triple, it, uh, it is going to use at most three variables. So that is called as intermediate code generation. Next one is code optimization. <clears throat> Actually, what is the purpose of code optimization? What is optimization? Optimization is nothing but reducing the code size, reducing the uh, instruction size, reducing the instruction size to get uh, to perform the program effectively and efficiently so for that purpose uh, it, it, can, it can convert uh, reduce the code into less number of instructions let us take uh, for example there are 10 instructions are there so those 10 instructions are reduced to uh, 5 to 6 instructions so whenever we take 10 instructions it will take more time to execute the code and the performance is also reduced when compared to 5 to 6 lines of code uh, performance is high as well as insta efficient is also improved next one is code generation code generation is nothing but it, it converts the uh, machine level instructions normal uh, instructions can be uh, converted to uh, machine level instructions which is understandable by the system so these are the six phases which are uh, under compiler design construction lexical analysis syntax in lexical or token strings syntax syntax tree or parser tree semantic uh, meaningful uh, errors next intermediate code code optimization code generation so apart from these uh, uh, phases, compiler design, compiler construction has to maintain uh, another two techniques, another two uh, <coughs> or one is a symbol table, second one is error detection. So first one is symbol table error detection. These two are common to every phase. Every phase. A symbol table as well as error detection are common to every phase. What is symbol table and what is error detection? Symbol table is nothing but whenever we take a lexical analysis phase or syntax analysis phase or any phase, in that phase uh, we, are, we are going to use some temporary values or uh, uh, in lexical analysis phase, it is going to maintain, um, it is going to divide the instructions into tokens. All those tokens or all those uh, token strings stored in a table, that table is called as symbol table. Symbol table is used to store the values. Values are nothing but entire variables or identifiers or constants or keywords, everything can be stored under symbol table for each phase as well as error detection or uh, let us take uh, we have six phases on, on this uh, six phases if we are if it is going to perform any phase let us take uh, instruction is a uh, syntax error so that error is identified under syntax analysis so that is identified by using error detection technique so that's why each phase has to maintain error detection techniques also. <clears throat> so among all these six phases, let us now discuss 
syntax analysis. So what is a syntax analysis? Syntax analysis is nothing but it is user to identify syntax errors. So how to identify syntax errors? Syntax errors are identified by constructing syntax tree or parser tree. So how to perform syntax tree or parser tree? Syntax tree or parser tree can be performed by the CFG. What is CFG? CFG is nothing but context free grammar. Context free grammar, it is the consisting of VTPS. VTPS where V indicates variables and T indicates terminals. P indicates production rules. S indicates starting symbol. So a CFG consisting of uh, a tuple, a tuple consisting of VTPS, where V consisting of variables, uh, T consisting of terminals, P consisting of production rules, and S consisting of start symbol, where uh, variables can be uh, can be written with the capital letters terminals can be written with the small let small case letters and production rules can be consisting of a production rule can be consisting of a tends to alpha where a belongs to where a belongs to set of variables and alpha belongs to collection of combination of variables as well as the terminals both. So this is a production rule of CFG context free grammar. Whereas the starting symbol represents starting of a production rule. Here uh, let us take examples for this. A tends to a A R A B. So left side of the production, every production will, must be consisting of variable. As well as the right side of a production rule must be consisting of a combination of variables and terminals. <coughs> so also we need to know derivation. What is the derivation? Derivation is nothing but Derivation is a process of deriving a string is called as a derivation. If the process of deriving a string is called as a derivation. Let us take one example here. Uh, e tends to E plus E. E tends to E star E. And E tends to ID. Then um, let us take one string here, id plus id star, id is there. Then if we want to uh, derive the string id plus id star id. So to derive this string, how to construct, uh, how to perform derivation for this string. Let us take e tends to e plus e. This e tends to e plus e, uh, what we need to construct here? id plus id star id so i am going to take this e as again e star e this e i am replacing with id plus id star id at last i am replacing this uh, using this grammar first we, i used this grammar e tends to e plus e after that i used this grammar at last i used i replaced e with id so we get the string so this is called as a derivation of a context free grammar actually there are two types of derivations one is leftmost derivation second one is rightmost derivation what is leftmost derivation and what is rightmost derivation? Leftmost derivation is nothing but 
So let us take the same example. Here we have taken e tends to e plus e. Uh, let us take e tends to instead of taking e plus e, I am taking this e star e here. So what which is the leftmost one variable here? This e is the leftmost variable. So this e I am replacing with the, the grammar e plus e. So this star e as it is. Now I am replacing this e with the id plus e star e. Again this i this e with the id star e. Again id plus id star id. So whenever we replace leftmost graph uh, leftmost variable first, that is called as a leftmost derivation. Uh, same as whenever we replace rightmost derivation first, then it is called as uh, sorry rightmost variable first, then it is called as rightmost derivation. Let us take the same example. E tends to e plus e. I am going to take first. Again, this e is uh, left rightmost e. I am replacing with the e star e. So here e plus e as it is, I am replacing last rightmost e with id, again without uh, after that rightmost e is this e, that I am replacing with id star id. So remaining e is replaced with id plus id star id. So this is called as rightmost derivation. So context free, actually con uh, one more thing, context free grammar can be uh, defined in different ways, classified into different ways. One is uh, ambiguous grammar, second one is unambiguous grammar. Ambiguous grammar is nothing but uh, whenever we construct uh, more than uh, one parser tree. So what is parser tree? Parser tree is nothing but uh, whenever we construct uh, that is a geom geometrical representation of a derivation is called as a parser tree or a diagrammatical representation of a or pictorial representation of a derivation is called as parser tree. Let us take the same example whichever we have taken here either leftmost or rightmost. Now let us take a leftmost derivation. E is implied. E star E. Again, this e, leftmost E can be uh, taken as E plus E. Now we replace E with ID. So how can we read this parser tree? So ID star ID plus id star id so like this we need to read a parser tree so leftmost derivation can be taken like this like that uh, rightmost derivation also taken geometrical representation so then uh, that is also called as parser tree whenever we construct more than one parser tree for a specific grammar that uh, grammar uh, that grammar is called as ambiguous grammar. What is ambiguous grammar? Ambiguous grammar is nothing but uh, whenever we construct more than one parser tree, then that grammar is called as ambiguous grammar. So here, two uh, we constructed for this grammar two derivations one is leftmost derivation and second one is rightmost derivation in other words we can construct two derivative uh, two uh, parser trees for this specific grammar then that grammar is called as uh, ambiguous grammar so whenever uh, let us take for example whenever there uh, there is a problem for that problem we have more than a number of solutions so which solution we need to follow so that is the confusion then we need to uh, eliminate uh, those number of solutions to one solution 
that is here also same thing we need to eliminate ambiguous of a particular grammar <coughs> so actually parsing uh, syntax analysis is also called as parsing parsing can be divided into two ways one is top down parsing second one bottom up parsing it is also called as parsing technique parsing can be divided into two ways one is a top down parsing second one bottom up parsing so what is the top down parsing and what is bottom up parsing top down parsing is nothing but constructing uh, let us take a syntax tree or parser tree whenever we start with the starting symbol and come to the uh, strings uh, to derive the strings that is called as a top down parsing which is nothing but we start from the starting symbol and reach to the strings derived so that is called as a top down parsing what is bottom up parsing bottom up parsing is nothing but we need to start from the bottom to the uh, starting symbol that is we need to start from the strings and when we reach to the starting symbol that is called as bottom up parsing so in that also we have different techniques bottom up parsing can be divided into different ways one is a uh, recursive non recursive or uh, it is also called as uh, with the back tracking with the back tracking without back tracking with the back tracking consisting the technique of <coughs> brute force brute force technique without back tracking consisting of ll of 1 and recursive descent parser so these are the techniques used under top down parsing in bottom up parsing we use different techniques one is SLR, CLR, LLR. So different variations of these also we used, and one more thing also we used under bottom up parsing, operator precedence parsing. <coughs> so what is a with the back tracking? Let us discuss first top down parsing. After that we discuss bottom up parsing. or what is top down parsing from starting symbol to reach to the uh, <coughs> string string is nothing but uh, terminals actually whenever we are constructing a parser tree or syntax tree a parser tree or syntax tree in that uh, syntax tree or parser tree consisting of starting is the root node root node always must and should be start symbol and uh, internal nodes are ter non terminals and leaf nodes are leaf nodes are always terminals top down parsing so in that with the back tracking without back tracking with the back tracking consisting of brute force technique what is brute force technique brute force technique is nothing but let us take a grammar that grammar consisting if we want to derive a string to derive a string we are going to replace a number of productions one after the other so whenever a production is not satisfying according to the given string we replace another production that production is also not going to satisfy then we go to the other production whenever that other production is also not going to satisfy then we are uh, going to replace another production so up to that it is the process will be replaced until 
whenever we reach our uh, <coughs> particular derivation of a string is uh, satisfied. So that is called as uh, brute force technique. So we have um, uh, disadvantage with the brute force technique because whenever the uh, string is not deriving with the uh, less number of uh, <coughs> uh, less number of the replacement of a grammar uh, that is production, then it will take more time. Okay, so for that purpose, uh, another format is also there. LL of one and without backtracking techniques, LL of one and <coughs> recursive descent parser. L what is LL of one? LL of one is nothing but one is indicates one look ahead. This L represents left to right. left to right scan this l represents left to most derivation okay so to perform ll of 1 we need to know first and follow functions so thank you for giving this opportunity so according to the time I explained this.